Hello, this is Mr. Zamoyski, chemistry teacher at North Tonawanda High School, and this is the pre-lab for the quarter one lab practical density of plastics. I have a variety of substances in front of me. I have mustard container, uh, stuff you can get your fruit in, disposable plastic bags, uh, pop rings or six-pack uh, six rings, um, plastic silverware or plastic utensils, PVC pipe. Um, and all these things have in common they're plastics. And we're going to take a look at how we separate these plastics into their different types. For a previous lab, the mass and volume lab, you looked at the relationship between the mass of copper and the volume of copper, and you also looked at the relationship between the mass of tin and the volume of tin. And you saw that you got a unique density relationship for each metal. We're going to use that same principle that all types of, or each type of plastic has a different density value. However, this will be different than that lab in that I'm not going to have you measure mass and volume directly to get density. The only thing you'll be allowed to use are four different mixtures to help you determine the density of each plastic. So let's take a look. You may be familiar with the common recycling symbol that's on all recyclable plastics. You have the triangle of arrows, the number in the middle, and then a one, two, three, or four letter abbreviation in the bottom indicating what kind of plastic it is. We're gonna look at six of the seven kinds of plastics here. Um, I'll just give you a brief rundown of the abbreviations and what they mean. Um, number one is PETE, which stands for polyethylene terephthalate. We have HDPE, which stands for high density polyethylene. Uh, v, number three, stands for PVC. Um, you'll most commonly find this in pipes or this kind of material. Um, it has other applications, but this is the primary use of PVC. Uh, next number four is low density polyethylene, LDPE. You're going to find these in disposable plastic bags and in six pack containers. Um, number five is polypropylene. You'll find it in common uh, consumer product plastics. Uh, number six is polystyrene. One of its most common applications is in disposable plastic utensils. There's also a seventh category. It's basically a catch-all of everything else that isn't included in these types. When you recycle all of your goods, it would be very time-consuming to sort these by hand. Um, so what they do at the recycling plant is they use the density, the unique density of those six plastics to separate them, and then each one goes through its own recycling processing. So let's take a look how you're going to do that. Mixtures you'll be working with are 50% isopropyl alcohol, distilled water, 3.5 molar sodium chloride solution, and a 4.0 calcium chloride solution. Each one has a slightly different density greater than the, the previous one, which allows you to separate the plastics based on these different densities. There aren't any major hazards associated with this aside from isopropyl alcohol, which is flammable, but we won't be working with fire. The only safety you'll need for this lab is your goggles, as always when you're working with chemicals. As for the procedure of your lab, that's the challenge of this practical. You're going to have to come up with that on your own, based on what you've done in your previous labs, and just your general knowledge and understanding of how to run an experiment. The only scaffolding I will give you is you will be provided a table of the six plastics you'll be working with, and you'll include observations uh, for each of the four chemicals that you have them interact with. That's all I'm going to give you, so good luck. Remember, when you're getting ready for this lab, to answer all the pre-lab questions, check the SDS for the four chemicals you're working with, and make sure you're properly dressed to complete this lab. Have a good day.